You're listening to the Hour of the Time, and I'm William Cooper. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight is going to be one of those special treats. So make sure you have your pen and paper by your side, and that you have whatever you need to wet your whistle, a glass of water, a glass of milk, or whatever it is that uh, you need to keep you in that chair for an hour. Get you a bag of pretzels, because... You're not going to miss, or you're not going to want to miss, I hope you don't miss, one single word of this broadcast. It is, essentially, you could add it on to the Mystery Babylon series. So those of you who have that series, it might be a good idea to tape this broadcast. Consider it part of your continuing education into how we got here and who's bringing it about and what does it all mean. Tonight's not going to solve that. It's going to present you with a mystery. But nevertheless, this mystery is crucial to what is happening today. And I believe that when it's ultimately solved, what will be presented to the world will be a deception of a great magnitude and could, in fact, literally destroy a Christian church. So if you're a Christian, you should especially listen.
Ladies and gentlemen, President Woodrow Wilson said this, quote, There is a power so organized, so subtle, so complete, so pervasive, that they had better not speak above their breath when they speak in condemnation of it. End quote. Now bear in mind that this was the President of the United States of America, a very powerful man, a very well-connected man. He knew what he was talking about. History is replete with whispers of secret societies, accounts of elders or priests who guarded the forbidden knowledge of ancient peoples. Prominent men meeting in secret who directed the course of civilization are recorded in the writings of all people. The oldest on record is known as the Brotherhood of the Snake, also called the Brotherhood of the Dragon. And it still exists under many different names. The Brotherhood of the Snake is devoted to guarding the secrets of the ages and to the recognition of Lucifer as the one and only true God. If you do not believe in God, Lucifer, or Satan, you must understand, ladies and gentlemen, that there are great masses of people who do. I do not believe in racism, but millions do, and their beliefs and actions based upon those beliefs will affect me, regardless of my belief. It is clear that religion has always played a significant role in the course of these organizations. Communication with a higher source, often divine, is a familiar claim in all but a few. The secrets of these groups are thought to be so profound that only a chosen, well-educated few are able to understand and use them. These men use their special knowledge for the benefit of all mankind, or so they say. And we know that some actually do. At least, that is what they claim. But how are we to know, since their knowledge and actions have been kept secret? Well, ladies and gentlemen, for those who are diligent and who search, it is all there. Some of it has become public knowledge. The greatest percentage is hidden in esoteric writings concealed by a language of symbology. I found it intriguing that in most, if not all, primitive tribal societies, all of the adults are members, every one of them. They're usually separated into male and female groups. The male usually dominates the culture. Surprisingly, this exactly resembles many civilized secret societies today. This can only mean that the society is working not against established authority, if all the adults belong to it, but for it in these ancient civilizations, our primitive tribal societies. In fact, it could be said to actually be the established authority in that particular situation. This would tend to remove the validity of any argument that all secret associations are dedicated to the destruction of properly constituted authority. This can only apply, of course, where the secret society makes up the majority or entirety of any people which it affects. I can assure you, ladies and gentlemen, that today, <laughs> very few, if any, fall into that category. Secret societies, in fact, mirror many facets of ordinary life. There is always an exclusivity of membership with the resultant importance attached to being or becoming a member. And this is found in all human endeavors, even those which are not secret, such as football teams or country clubs. This exclusivity of membership is actually one of the secret society's most powerful weapons. There is the use of signs, passwords, and other tools. These have always performed valuable functions 
in man's organizations everywhere. The stated reason, almost always different from the real reason for the society's existence, is important. It can be anything, but it is usually fraternal and is said to be existing for the good of the community. And it is found in all pressure groups wherever human beings congregate. The comradeship is especially important. Sharing hardships or secrets has always been a special thrill to men. No one who has ever undergone the rigors of boot camp is ever likely to forget the special feeling of belonging and comradeship that was shared between the victims of the drill sergeant, our company commander. And yes, I meant victims, for that is exactly what they are. Their world is shattered, destroyed, and a new one built, which they become a part of. It is an emotion born of initiation, a rebirth, if you will. That's why all this born-again stuff is very dangerous. You see, you're either a Christian or you're not. You've accepted Christ or you haven't. You've been baptized or you have not. And you can be born again every day for 365 days each year for every year for the rest of your life. It will not change a thing. And that goes for every other religion. And every secret society. It is an emotion born of initiation. The most potent tool of any secret society is the ritual and myth surrounding initiation. You see, these special binding ceremonies have very deep meaning for the participants. Whether they actually understand the ceremony or the symbology involved or the true meaning is irrelevant. It is the specialness, the emotion, the knowledge that you are one of few who have experienced this initiation and have been accepted by a band of men calling themselves the elite, the elect, the special, the superior race. Pick one or pick all, because they usually all apply. Initiation, ladies and gentlemen, performs several functions which make up the heart and soul of any true secret society. You can form a secret society if you wish, but without some kind of special initiation that separates that person from the rest of the world and gives them literally, in their mind, an emotional rebirth, a new chance with a brotherhood or a sisterhood who have pledged everlasting allegiance to that person. Like boot camp, the initiation into the armed forces, important aspects of human thought that are universally compelling are merged to train and maintain the efforts of a group of people to operate in a certain direction. Initiation bonds the members together in mysticism. Neophytes gain knowledge of a secret, giving them special status. The ancient meaning of neophyte is, quote, planted anew or reborn, end quote. A higher initiation is in reality a promotion inspiring loyalty and the desire to move up to the next rung. The goals of the society are reinforced causing the initiated to act toward those goals in everyday life. Most never even realize what they are doing. But that brings about a change in the political and social action of the member. The change is always in the best interest of the goals of the leaders of the secret society. The leaders are called adepts, priests, the illumined ones. A thousand points of light, the stars in the firmament of the heavens, and I could go on.
This can best be illustrated by the soldier trained to follow orders without thinking. The result is often the wounding or death of the soldier for the realization of the commander's goal, which may or may not be good for the overall community and certainly was not good for the soldier. And maybe now you can understand why the wrath of the military came down around Specialist Michael News' shoulders when he refused to wear the United Nations uniform. Initiation is a means of rewarding ambitious men who can be trusted. You will notice that the higher the degree of initiation, the fewer the members who possess the degree. Now, this is not because the other members are not ambitious, but because a process, a process of very careful selection is being conducted. You see, a point is reached where no effort is good enough without a pull up by the higher members. Most members never proceed beyond this point, and never learn the real secret purpose of the group. The member frozen at that point, from that point on, serves only as a part of the political power base, as indeed he has always done, and provides a political consensus that leads the body politic in a direction, away from which it would have gone if this group had not existed in their midst. You may have guessed by now that initiation is a way to determine who can and cannot be trusted, who believes in the mystery God, and who does not. A method of deciding exactly who is to become an adept may be decided during initiation by literally asking the candidate to spit upon the Christian cross. If the candidate refuses... The members congratulate him and tell him, you have made the right choice, as a true adept would never do such a terrible thing. The newly initiated might find it disconcerting, however, that he or she never advances any higher, no matter how hard they work, study, participate, or beg. If instead the candidate spits upon the cross... He or she has demonstrated a knowledge of one of the mysteries and soon will find him or herself a candidate for the next higher level. You see, almost all of these require a belief in a higher being, but they never, ever tell you who that being is. And it is forbidden to mention the name of Jesus the Christ in the Lodge. And that should give you a clue. The mystery, literally, is that religion is but a tool to control the masses. Knowledge, or wisdom, is their only God through which man himself will become God. Wisdom is represented and has been represented throughout the history of the world as the serpent, the snake. Satan, Lucifer, The snake and the dragon are both symbols of wisdom. Lucifer is the personification of the symbol. It was Lucifer who tempted Eve to entice Adam to eat of the tree of knowledge. Tree of knowledge. Tree of knowledge. And nothing to do, ladies and gentlemen, with any apple. And thus free man from the bonds of ignorance. The worship which is a lot different from study of knowledge, science, or technology, is Satanism in its purest form. And its God is Lucifer. Its secret symbol is the all-seeing eye in the pyramid. Undesirable effects of secret societies and their aura of mystery have sometimes given them the reputation for being abnormal associations, or at the very least, strange groups of people. Whenever their beliefs are those of the majority, they are no longer considered antisocial. A good example is the Christian Church, which was at one time a secret society under the Roman Empire. They were a minority, persecuted. In fact, the open, friendly, secret society actually ruled most, if not all, of the known world at one time after when the Roman Empire became, literally, the Vatican. And the emperor became the pope. 
It was a marriage. You see, the small cult of Christians were threatening the empire. And no matter how many they killed, three times as many sprang up to take their place. So a very, very wise Roman Empire named Constantine. Actually, he was not the empire, even though I'm sure he thought he was. He was the emperor. He married the Roman pantheon of gods with the teachings of this cult called Christianity, or Christians, and created what is now today known as the Catholic Church, from which all other Christian churches sprang. The pantheon of Roman gods became the pantheon of saints. The emperor became the pope. And from that day, Rome ruled the world another 1,200 years and staved off the destruction of the empire. In fact, the empire grew and spread and took in all of Europe. Most secret societies are generally considered to be antisocial. They're believed to contain elements that are not liked or are outright harmful to the community in general. This is exactly the case in some instances. Communism and fascism are secret societies in many countries where they are prohibited by law. In this country, the Nazi Party and the Ku Klux Klan are secret societies due mostly to the fact that the general public is disgusted by them. Their activities are sometimes illegal, thus the secrecy of their membership. The early Christians were a secret society because Roman authorities considered them from the start to be a dangerous group to imperial rule. The same was true of the followers of Islam. At least some of these true believers, working in secret, accomplished what would turn out to be for the eventual good of society. The Drusid and Yazidis in Syria and Iraq consider the Arabs a dangerous secret society dedicated to the takeover of the world. The Arabs today think the same of the Jews. Catholics and Freemasons used to have precisely the same ideas about each other. Now, at the highest level, they are one organization. Documented in a book entitled The Broken Cross by Piers Compton. In many primitive or backward societies, initiation into the highest degrees of the group involves subjection to trials, which not infrequently resulted in death or insanity for the candidate. It can be seen that social right and wrong is not the yardstick in estimating the value of a secret society. Usually, with these people, the end justifies the means. In Borneo, a tribal society, initiates of hunting organizations consider it meritorious and compulsory to hunt heads. In Polynesia, infanticide and debauch were considered essential for initiation into their societies, where the tribal code needed members who indulged in these things as pillars of society. You see, since the beginning of recorded history, governmental bodies of every nation have been involved with maintaining the status quo to defend the establishment against minority groups that sought to function literally as states within states or to oust the constituted authority and take over in its place, either by subterfuge, coup d'etat, or open revolution. Many of these attempts, as we all know, if we read history, have succeeded but have not always lasted. Man's desire to be one of the elect is something that no power on earth has been able to lessen, let alone destroy. It is one of the secrets of secret societies. It is what gives them a political base and lots and lots of clout. Members often vote the same and give each other preference in daily business, legal and social activities. It is the deepest desire of many to be able to say, I 
belong to the elect. I am better than all of these other people. And I know a secret. After all, haven't I been chosen to belong to this elite organization of fraternal brothers who control the community? I am special. Houses of worship and sacrifice existed in all of the ancient cities. They were, in fact, temples built to honor the many gods. These buildings, ladies and gentlemen, functioned often as meeting places for philosophers and mystics who were, in fact, the priests and the leaders of those cities. They were believed to possess the secrets of nature. These men usually banded together in seclusive philosophic and religious schools known as the Mysteries. Those who did not belong were known as the profane. The most important of all of these ancient groups is the Brotherhood of the Snake and the Dragon, as I have revealed to you earlier, and was simply known as the Mysteries. The Snake and Dragon are symbols that represent wisdom. You can see in the ancient hieroglyphics and paintings upon the walls of the tombs in Egypt that the elect, the priests, the leaders, the pharaohs, wore the symbol of the snake upon their forehead. They were members of the mysteries. They had to be to rule. For if they did not know the secrets of ruling, the secrets of nature, they could not control the mass of the profane. Or as some others call them, cattle or sheep. The father of wisdom, ladies and gentlemen, is Lucifer, also called the light bearer. The focus of worship for the mysteries was Osiris in Egypt, Another name of Lucifer. Osiris was the name of a bright star that the ancients believed had been cast down onto the earth. The literal meaning of Lucifer is bringer of light. The star is bright. The truth is light. Republic of Texas. Osiris was the name of a bright star that the ancients believed had been cast down onto the earth. The literal meaning of Lucifer is bringer of light or the morning star. Many people have it all wrong. They look to the sky to find the morning star and they point to Venus. And they are wrong. The star that rises in the morning, ladies and gentlemen, is the sun. The sun. The star is bright. The truth is light. After Osiris was gone from the sky, the ancients saw the sun as the representation of Osiris, or more correctly, Lucifer. Albert Pike said, and I quote, Osiris was represented by the sun, end quote. In the Bible, in Isaiah chapter 14, verse 12, quote, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, end quote. Fred Giddings, in his book Symbolism in Occult Art, said this, quote, It is claimed that after Lucifer fell from heaven, he brought with him the power of thinking as a gift for mankind, end quote. They believed that God was evil. He was holding man prisoner in the Garden of Eden in the bonds, the chains of ignorance. Lucifer set man free from these bonds, these chains of ignorance, with the gift of intellect, through the use of which man himself will become God. Lucifer is Prometheus. Lucifer is the lightning bolt that strikes the tree and sets it afire, from which man took a burning branch 
and by adding more wood, kept the fire burning and noticed that when he piled certain rocks around the fire and they got hot enough, something melted and flowed out into the ground. From this, he learned to make tools. You see, without the fire that the philosophers of fire worship, without the serpent, Lucifer, there would be no Ford Broncos today for me to drive. This is what they believe. And so they worship the symbol, which is Lucifer, and they strive through their work to accomplish the great plan and guide the evolution of man into apotheosis. Most of the greatest monsters rights. Some of which were very cruel. Most of the greatest minds that have ever lived were initiated into the Society of Mysteries by secret and dangerous rites, some of which were very cruel. Some of the most famous were known as Osiris, Isis, Sabazius, Sibyl, and Lucius. Plato was one of these initiates, and in his writings, he describes some of the mysteries and his own initiation. Bob Shop. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They don't know about this. Bob Shop. Yeah. 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 In case you didn't know, who yeah. is this? Well, it's the barbershop, the one and only. Crushing all these phonies in the clubs, they my homie. In the streets, they, they don't, don't know me. me. They cowards, Just trying to live a lifestyle that's ours. For the people who live hip hop, hour after hour. Minute by minute, as the second sick, I'm wrecking shit. Put it in writing so my seeds can inherit it. The fakes keep fearing it, people keep hearing it. Barbershop and seeds, freestyling over instruments. Walk a blunt, then an instant. Fix it. To put on the tape, my DJ was missing. Set on the mission. The times I blow kisses. To whack crews, I throw this is. Cause it's the point they missing. This is what you call the best in the West. Full fledged hip hop without the bulletproof vest. See our words of life, breath taking rhymes. Sign in, connected by me, collected MCs, elected by the Crest Heights. Officially, see my duty as an MC from the barbershop. Fresh cut the hip hop, chase pussy pop to this. While I'm sipping Guinness, close smelling like sex without the yes, yes. We bless this. It ain't my fault, like Mr. Hey, Coast. My so fault. intangible, too much to handle. Battle us, that's just a big gamble. That you might lose, fuck it, you will. Tons of guns that kill. This is for real. SK, watch my name ring. My AK shot sounds, it's the same thing as heroin. That's why the brain fiend. Pay the spot and train spot the vein on the scheme. To annihilate the number one team. The barbershop got the music, the music, the money, the money, the women, the women. The barbershop got the the music, the music, the money, the money, the women, the women, the barbershop got the music, the music, the money, the money, the women, the women, the barbershop got the music, the music, the money, the money, the women, the women, yo, hitting corners rolling quick, barbershop city slicks, that's the name, the type of nigga to blow a nick. To a dub, hit the ball walking in the club. Telly on the rock, top listing up a dub. That's in the corner, rollowing. Was walking through the club, James following. Drip on his neck with the bottling, that's expected. I can't help it if my whole crew's infected. With the dopeness, it's hopeless. Like hey, who told you to focus? Shop form just like locusts. Out for the kill and the takeover. Covering ground from LA to Dover. The type of cats you could call rovers. We roaming like some wild, wild, wild is homing. We sick, cause we kick. Sick ass lyrics, it's 
contagious Cause my whole crew's outrageous Barbershop nigga, can't nobody else stage us Barbershop crew, we got nothing else to do But hit our niggas off with some shit that's brand new Understand, I'm so hype man I don't even need a hype man Just give me a motherfucking mic stand The third good martial education I look forward to taking on the nation With the inspiration My desperation, my eye examination Concentration, congratulations Unfortunately, I torture MC like a bloody Burn a nigga up like a black and midi Fresh baked breads and vegetables Buttered up delectables These women we meet wanna get sexual Heavy drinker, heavy thinker Heroics, ask the questions you wanna know To the niggas that know it Half an ounce of wine one night blowing You got the skill, show it I drink hard liquor and shake up the moet Celebrate, toast to the utmost great Net weight, fish on the plate Niggas in emergency state Get your weapons, protect your family You get to stepping, stepping Barbershop got the music, the music, the money, the money, the women, the women. The barbershop got the music, the music, the money, the money, the women, the women. The barbershop got the music, the music, the money, the money, the women, the women. The barbershop got the music, the music, the money, the money, the money, the women, women. Got the music, the music, the money, the money, the women, the women. The barbershop got the music, the music, money. Money, women, women, barbershop got the music, the music, the money, the money, women, women, the barbershop got the music. Plato's initiation, ladies and gentlemen, encompassed three days of entombment in the Great Pyramid, during which time he died symbolically, was reborn, and was given secrets that he was to preserve. Plato's writings are full of information on the mysteries. Manley P. Hall stated in his book, The Secret Teachings of All Ages, that, quote, The illumined of antiquity entered its portals as men, they came forth as gods, end quote. And he was talking about the Great Pyramid of Giza. The ancient Egyptian word for pyramid was kuti, spelled K-H-U-T-I, which literally meant glorious light. Mr. Hall says also, quote, The pyramids, the great Egyptian temples of initiation, end quote. You see, ladies and gentlemen, they were never, ever tombs for anyone. They were temples of initiation. How does that grab you? According to many, the Great Pyramids were built to commemorate and observe a supernova explosion that occurred in the year 4000 B.C. Dr. Anthony Hewish, a 1974 Nobel Prize winner in physics, discovered a rhythmic series of radio pulses which he proved were emissions from a star that had exploded around 4000 B.C. The Freemasons began their calendar from A.L., which means in the year of light, found by adding 4,000 to the modern year. That's 1990 plus 4,000 equals 5,990 A.L., which is Anos Luminos, or the year of light. Go to any Masonic temple or any building in Washington, D.C. that was laid, that the cornerstone was laid in a Masonic ceremony, at least one of which was laid by George Washington himself, and you will see the date inscribed as Annos Luminos. George Mikanowski wrote in The Once and Future Star, that the ancient Sumerian cuneiform described a giant star exploding within a triangle formed by Zeta Pupae, Gamma Valorum, and Lambda Valorum, located in the southern sky. An accurate star catalog now stated that the blazing star that had exploded within the triangle would again be seen by man in 6,000 years. According to the Freemasons' calendar, it will occur in the year 2000, <laughs> and ladies and gentlemen, it just may very well do that. And in the year 2000, simultaneously, supposedly, 
from what I have been told and from what I have learned from my research, a vault containing the ancient records of the earth will be opened in Egypt. I predicted that they would find a passageway beneath the Sphinx, and they have, within the last couple of years, actually discovered the passageway that I had predicted. They do not know where it leads yet. The return of Lucifer, represented by this great light in the sky, also described by Malachi Martin in his book, The Keys to This Blood, written with the blessings of the Pope, described that the Pope is now waiting for a great light which will appear in the heavens, signaling the greatest return of humanity to the Church in the history of the world. Malachi Martin describes this event as a fission event. A fission event, ladies and gentlemen, is an atomic explosion. Could this have something to do with the plutonium on board the spacecraft known as Galileo, which according to NASA's own figures, will go into a decaying orbit and plunge into the center of Jupiter sometime around December of the year 2000. Galileo is carrying over 47 pounds of plutonium. The return of Lucifer and the opening of the vault will usher in the millennium. A great celebration has already been planned by a society known as the Millennium Society to take place at the very pyramids in Egypt, this is according to the January 3, 1989 edition of the Arizona Daily Star. Quote, President-elect Bush is spending this New Year's holiday at Camp David, Maryland, but in ten years he may be in Egypt. Organizers of the Millennium Society say he's already committed to ushering in the next century at the Great Pyramid of Cheops in Giza. On his birthday, ladies and gentlemen, during his administration, he was photographed, and this photograph was published widely, lying in bed, holding a model of the pyramid in his hand. The first secret that one must know to even begin to understand the mysteries is that their members believe that there are but few truly mature minds in the world. And I never believed that until I started dealing with the sheeple, and now I'm not so certain that they're wrong. They believe that those minds belong exclusively to them. That I still disagree with, because I'm not one of them, and I think I've got a pretty good mind. And I know some other people who are not part of them, and I think they have some pretty good minds also. The philosophy that follows is the classic secret society view of humanity. Quote, When a person of strong intellect is confronted with a problem which calls for the use of reasoning faculties, they keep their poise and attempt to reach a solution by garnering facts bearing upon the question. On the other hand, those who are immature when confronted by the same problem are overwhelmed while the former may be said to be qualified to solve the mystery of their own destiny, the latter must be led like a bunch of animals and taught in the simplest language. Like sheep, they are totally dependent upon the shepherd. The able intellect is taught the mysteries and the esoteric spiritual truths. The masses are taught the literal exoteric interpretations. While the masses worship the five senses, the select few observe, recognizing the gulf between them, the symbolic concretions of great abstract truths. The initiated elect communicate directly to gods, who communicate back to them. The masses sacrifice their lambs on an altar facing a stone idol that can neither hear or speak. The elect are given knowledge of the mysteries and are illumined and are thus known as the Illuminati or the Illuminated Ones, the guardians of the secrets of the ages 
End quote. Three early secret societies that can be directly connected to a modern descendant are the cults of Roshania, Mithras, and their counterpart, the Builders. They have many things in common with the Freemasons of today, as well as with many other branches of the Illuminati. For instance, common to the Brotherhood are the symbolic rebirth into a new life, without going through the portal of death during initiation, reference to the lion and the grip of the lion's paw in the Master Mason's degree, the three degrees, which is the same as the ancient Masonic rites, before the many other degrees were added, the ladder of seven rungs, men only, and of course, the all-seeing eye. And you might ask, after hearing this broadcast, here we are in America. Why is there a pyramid on the back of the one dollar bill with an all-seeing eye floating above it in a smaller pyramid surrounded by rays of light. <laughs> of special interest is the powerful society in Afghanistan in ancient times called the Roshania or the Illuminated Ones. There are actually references to this very mystical cult going back through history to the House of Wisdom at Cairo. At one time, Arabia, ladies and gentlemen, was the seat of all of the knowledge in the world. In fact, they had the only universities in the entire world. The major tenets of this cult were the abolition of private property, the elimination of religion, the elimination of nation-states, the belief that illumination emanated from the supreme being who desired a class of perfect men and women to carry out the organization and direction of the world, belief in a plan to reshape the social system of the world by first taking control of individual countries one by one, and the belief that after reaching the fourth degree, one could communicate directly with the unknown supervisors who had imparted knowledge to initiates throughout the ages. Wise men will again recognize the Brotherhood. In fact, the Brotherhood today believes in these very same tenets. And if you are indeed observant, you can see that this is exactly what they have done and what they are in the process of completing. It's called socialism. Can you hear the echo of the Nazi party? These liars, these deceivers, call those of us who love liberty and freedom and who would restrict the power of government, and who would be responsible for our lives, Nazis. It is one of the greatest deceptions of the modern age, ladies and gentlemen, for Nazis were socialists. Hitler was a socialist. Nazi literally means national socialism. Hitler nationalized everything. Hitler created programs for everybody, on every level. Nazis, ladies and gentlemen, are not right-wing, freedom-loving, responsible individuals. Nazis are socialists. Always have been, always will. Socialism is the father of fascism which is a marriage of the social state with the corporate elite. Have you fallen for the deception? Do you refer to people on the right as Nazis? And do you, as a member of the Nazi party, call yourself right-wing? 
claim that you love liberty and freedom? If you do, you've not only been lied to, but you're lying to yourselves and everyone else. You are, in fact, socialist fascists. And you are properly categorized on the left just above communism. The important fact to remember is that the leaders of both the right and the left are a small, hardcore of men who have been and still are illuminous, are members of the Brotherhood. They may have been or may be members of the Christian or Jewish religions, or atheists, or Buddhists, but that is only to further their own ends. Remember, the end justifies the means. They are and always have been Luciferian and internationalists. Today, the Southern Baptist Church is in the total control of the Freemasonic Lodge. They give allegiance to no particular nation, although they have used, on occasion, nationalism to further their cause. Their only concern is to gain greater economic and political power. The ultimate objective of the leaders of both groups is identical. That is why it doesn't make any difference whether you elect Democrat or Republican. The result has always been the same. And we go closer and closer to one world totalitarian socialist government. After all, wasn't it George Bush, a so-called right-wing conservative Republican, who first used the term New World Order? They are determined to win for themselves undisputed control of the wealth, natural resources, and manpower of the entire planet. They intend to turn the world into their conception of a Luciferian totalitarian socialist state. In the process, they will eliminate all Christians, Jews, and atheists. And that's why you better stop picking on the Jews. The Jews who are involved in this, who call themselves Jews, are not Jews at all. And doesn't the Bible tell you something about that? Those Jews who really are Jews will be eliminated. Along with fundamentalist Muslims. Now, you've just learned one, but only one of the great mysteries of what is coming in the future. The Rosh Shania also called themselves the Order. Initiates took an oath that absolved them from all allegiance except to the order and stated, quote, I bind myself to perpetual silence and unshaken loyalty and submission to the order. All humanity which cannot identify itself by our secret sign is our lawful prey, end quote. The oath remains essentially the same to this day. The secret sign was to pass a hand over the forehead, palm inward. The countersign to hold the ear with the fingers and support the elbow in the cupped other hand. Does that sound familiar? Have you seen people exchange these signs right before your nose and you knew not what was happening? There are many other signs, a handshake, and many others. The five points of fellowship. The order at the highest level is known as the order of the quest or the Jason Society. The cult preached that there was no heaven, no hell, only a spirit state completely different from life as we know it. The spirit could continue to be powerful on earth through a member of the order, but only if the spirit had been itself a member of the order before its death. Thus, members of the order gained power from the spirits of the dead members. Now listen to this very closely. And if you attended the Cure Convention in Wichita, Kansas, this last weekend, listen very carefully. You're going to learn something. The Roshania took in travelers as initiates and then sent them on their way to found new chapters of the order. It is believed by some that the assassins were a branch of the Roshania. Branches of the Roshania are the illuminated ones, are the Illuminati existed and still exist everywhere. One of the rules was not to use the same name and never mention the Illuminati. That rule is still in effect today. I believe that it is the breaking of this rule that resulted in Adam Weishaupt's downfall. And ever since that day, ladies and gentlemen, they call themselves fellow travelers. And this last weekend at the Cure Convention, one of the candidates for president, who was nominated but did not, 
or excuse me, was nominated to be considered for the nomination, but was not elected. At his farewell speech, said that he was so happy to have met so many fellow travelers during the Cure Convention. All of you should read again the works of Hegel. The entire, and I mean the entire text of tonight's broadcast, was taken from my book, the chapter entitled Secret Societies in the New World Order, Behold a Pale Horse. I wrote this over five years ago, ladies and gentlemen. Much of it I wrote six and seven years ago. And it has been the underground bestseller ever since its publication. And that's not a pitch to buy it. That's just my normal source so that you'll know where the information came from. Good night. And God bless each and every single one of you. Step up, step up, step, step up, step up front to get beat down. Get beat down. You dig, you dig, you dig. Yeah. Got it. Got it. Back in the ring. Rasco and Boogie. It's the beat down. down. Swinging elbows and fists. Something like this. It goes. You know what? I swing hard, 16 shots to leave your shit scarred One blow, niggas is looking for discharge My blood pumps looking for chunks I maintain, making money in lumps Only the music that bumps Still move the crowd back to front Control like it's 18 holes Looking for the greens Everything ain't as good as it seems Still in the game, but I'm switching the team I got new dudes ready to feud with whoever the fuck want it Put up your guns and get done Your whole team ready to run Lace up your track shoes Never get these niggas we smack fools We all night, you niggas is alright We train through rough terrain Blood pumping through the veins Quick hands will make you change your plans When these blows land, we'll find who's the real man Check the sound Rasco, baby, I came to get down Straight from my neck of the woods to your town Niggas still loving the way the beat pounds It's the beat down Check the sound Rasco, baby, I came to get down Straight from my neck of the woods to your town Niggas still loving the way the beat pounds It's the beat down Fish the chief Fill at home up in that ass for six weeks I throw gloves hitting these niggas with no love Push came to shove I bashed them sniffing the checks to straight cash them M. Bug ship the nigga the goods Now I slap box tracks like I'm back in the hood Survive the fittest We quick so you cats can't hit us When Roy Jones on them when they came to get us It's a breeze plus a long shot fucking with these Ten to one got no biz fucking with sun Dudes is done I'm old school 71, I'm classic You can step in the ring and get blasted Quick draw when I'm breaking your jaw Breaking the law, we maintain Making it raw, it's that uncut Nigga that you paid to hate You can hate more nigga cause I raised the rates It's like, check the sound Rasco, baby, I came to get down Straight from my neck of the woods to your town Niggas still loving the way The beat pounds, it's the beat down Check the sound Rasco, baby, I came to get down Straight from my neck of the woods to your town, niggas still loving the way the beat pounds. It's the beat down. This hard work can hurt. The techniques I freak be down in the dirt. I do mines and spurts and raise up skirts. You young bucks get stuck for flash and approach this game in one fashion. What's that? Hit cats with ridiculous speed. Nice with mine to give y'all whatever you need. Box and brawl, my six style getting them all. I'm the ref standing they count, making the call. Down and out, I show them what it's all about. Quick to change, my game still out of they rank. Out of the lane, they couldn't catch hard to gain against the grain To make fools suffer in pain Simple and plain, you know what I'm talking about Leave the spot with my fist still stuck in your mouth Pound for pound, I'd rather go round for round Everybody check the sit down, it's the beat, did it Check the sound, Rasco, baby, I came to get down Straight from my neck of the woods to your town Niggas still loving the way the beat pounds It's the beat down Check the sound, Rasco, baby, I came to get down Straight from my neck of the woods to your town Niggas still loving the way the beat pounds It's the beat down